DigiKey and Adafruit. Present. Hi, on NPR. This week, Eye on MPI is from? Octavo Systems. All right. All right, so... Uh, what do they do? IMPI, by the way, every single week is the latest and greatest, the most cutting-edge new product introduction. And you might uh, learn something. You might learn something, but there's also a place where you can get it, and it's from DigiKey. This week, Octavo. Octavo, I don't know. Octavo yeah. Systems. Um, okay, so what is this? we're going to have to go back in time. Because this week's product, uh, INMPI, is the OSD32 MP157. But to explain this, I want to talk about an earlier version of a similar chip. It's the OSD32. Sorry, this is the OSD32 MP15X, um, the series. And um, it's got all these things inside of it. And we're going to go back to this image, but I want to talk about the BeagleBum Black first to explain. So the BeagleBum Black came out a couple like five years ago and it has uh, this ti satara processor some ram it's actually kind of like a pre i think it was a pre raspberry pi linux board it was very early yeah. and it runs linux it's got gpio and you can connect the tft to it. it's got ethernet you can see it's got usb and everything you connect a hub and it's running embedded linux um and this was really neat and um it sort of was one of the first boards that was like, you could, for a, a low price, add embedded Linux to your project or product. Um, there's only one problem, is you needed all these chips in, a, in like a six or eight layer board because you needed this main processor, this Cortex-A8, uh, the Satara processor, you needed some RAM, um, you needed this uh, power management IC that was kind of custom made for it, uh, all these passives, and you needed to do the routing like kind of perfectly because the chip is running at like about a gigahertz. So what Octavo Systems did, um, is they took all of these parts and they bonded them onto a really small circuit board. Um, so this is a circuit board of this module. On the top left there, you see some RAM. In like the middle right, you see the main processor chip and there's a wire bond that's bonded onto the PCB directly. And then the lower left, I think that's the power management chip. And then you see all the capacitors and like inductors and ferrites and passives. Um, that keep this chip nice and happy and all the wiring, the complicated wiring, especially the, the RAM to microprocessor wiring is all done for you, right? Like all those lines are pre-connected and they're like perfectly differentially matched and all that good stuff. And then this little PCB, which is only like, you know, two centimeters by two centimeters or so, is bonded, uh, it, sorry, epoxied and encapsulated and turned into a chip. And then, you know, that chip was then uh, put here, you can see in the center of this pocket beagle. So you compare this pocket beagle to the beagle bump black, you see the pocket beagle is like a quarter of the size, and there's almost like all the components in the center have been turned into one chip. It's this integration um, that makes it really compact and really easy to build with. Um, in fact, it's so integrated that you can dead bug a Linux computer using this chip. And that's a hack that Octavo did to show off just how integrated this is. All you need is like literally what, like eight resistors, four LEDs to just tell you what boot state you're in, and a couple jumper wires, and then they, they wired up a USB connector directly. And this is a booting Linux system. Um, and that's pretty amazing. Like you don't need anything else. And you can just like blue wire hack a Linux computer. So if, you're, if you wanted to add Linux to a product or project and you didn't want to go through the eight layer board like 10 revision layer you just want to you just want to get the product out there you don't have to worry about all the wiring differentials and like all the boot state you know straps and all that this OSD 3358 integrated Octavo systems chip uh, would do the job for you very nicely in fact they also published this is the minimal board layout I mean it's minimal Right, and this is wow. a, a full Linux computer running at a gigahertz, um, and it's pick and placeable, and and the BGA is like one millimeter pitch, so you you know you can see like you can route multiple traces through, and you can you could probably like etch this board using any low cost two layer. Um, yeah. You could probably DIY the PCB if you want to, or you could send it out to a PCB house. It'll only cost you a couple bucks. Okay, so now they have a new chip out which is the OSD 32 MP157. So, sorry, let's go back to this uh, image. Same deal, you got the PCB, and inside you've got the ST-STM32 MP155X, which has got a dual Cortex-A7, and I think they're running it up to 800 megahertz, and there's a Cortex 
M4, it's probably like some STM32 F4 or something, something that's wired directly in so you can use it for your real-time control stuff. Um, it's got up to a gig of RAM. It's got the crystals. It's got the power management. It's got the pass. It's got the, you know, the capacitors or the inductors. And it's under two by two centimeters in a one millimeter pitch BGA. So it's like, again, fairly easy to work with. Um, it's not a 0.5 millimeter, 0.4 millimeter BGA. You don't have to worry about buried or blind vias. You could probably use a two layer board even to put this thing together. All right, so this is what they... I'm just gonna say something. This sure, is something. this is like, there's a couple movie scenes and, and like sci-fi scenes. This is, I, I like this chip in particular because it's so futuristic and out there it's like it's actually amazing so there is there's a scene in like terminator 2 judgment day where mm -hmm. it's like wow like this chip like it, it's from a terminator brain yeah yeah it's sure. like this, this yeah this is skynet this, 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 no it's not skynet it's just like this taught us so many new directions things that we wouldn't have even thought of and then there's a star trek next generation episode where ultimately the person stole some a piece of technology from the future um but uh, they're like, oh, it's a piece of the future. This reminds me of this. This seems like a very futuristic. It seems like an NPI. <laughs> so, an NPI. Um, no, right. I picked the good ones. Yeah. Okay. So uh, they did the same thing with this new, you know, micro computer chip from ST. Again, it runs Linux. It's got Android support mainline. Um, so you can uh, get up and running with it very quickly. And you can see they took uh, the PMIC, the, the power management chip, top right. They got the RAM kind of middle right. And then the main processor chip and shrink it all down and not only is it a space reduction but it's just a complexity reduction you have to worry about you know like doing the schematic capture and layout for all of these lines over and over again you just drop this chip into your board and you're done um okay so next up this is just what's in there's also an eprom chip uh, you can use like that to store your mac address or you know whatever keys you need for for configuration um and yeah it's all completely integrated and then you know what's actually in it um, on the left is all the extra parts of the gig of DDR3 RAM, the EEPROM, the oscillators, the passives, and then on the right you can see what's actually in it. So there's the 200 megahertz Ar uh, ARM Cortex M4, the dual uh, Cortex A7, it's got like Ethernet, it's got USB, it's got, um, oh, can you make this a little bigger? So I can, uh, so you can see it? Yeah, because there's like a small text I just want to read. It's got, uh, it's got DAX, ADCs, it's got, um, you know, motor control timers, you know, G open GL supports, so that's in Linux, MIPI DSI and LCD, and we've got the um, display accelerator, lots of peripherals, I squared to UR, SPDIF. So it's like, it's got all these really sweet, you know, microcontroller type accessories, but it's a microcomputer. So you can, you can really make a complicated product or project. It could be a really good, like, um, 3D printer driver, I think, like, because you mm. can, you, you know, you have the built-in uh, connectivity stacks, and it's got, you know, timers, mass squared Cs, and, and GPIOs to do motor control. Yeah. Um, so this is also, there's a dev board if you want to just sort of get a look of, like, what what is the minimum set of uh, components you need, um, much like the, um, the dead bug uh, Sitara board. This one, you know, has a micro SD card on the left. Uh, for your file system, it's got uh, ST-Link header, um, it's got UART for, you know, you want to talk to the, the serial console, uh, reset buttons and LEDs, the boot mode switches, uh, and the micro USB. Um, so yeah, kind of like everything you need to get started and all, all the GPIO you could want. And this is like an Oshpark board or something. Like and something. where can they get it? I'm glad you asked. They are available and in stock right now at DigiKey, so search for OSD. 32MP157. Oh, but I have a short URL. Oh, you have a short URL? Z Z9, Z9DW0H. But there is, uh, folks will put the link in the chat, but here is the product ID, short URL. Yes, and, you can and there's also a couple just versions. I also oh, have, yeah, there's a couple versions. Um, I didn't actually look in detail on the, all the different versions, probably different amounts of RAM or a different number of GPIO pins. Um, but all available, and then the dev kit, that dev board, the purple one, is also available. Okay, so you ask of the overhead. So this is the chip. Um, so you can see, you want to you zoom in? Yeah, I'm going to see what I can do here. And then I'm going to try to focus it. Yeah, maybe you can. I think I want it too much. It's picking up the background, but... Yeah, it's, it's a little bit too much. 
too much chip. Here, try to take the mouse pad away. Yeah. And then try to do it that way. Okay. Well, we can see the um, ball good array. So that's kind of nice. There you go. Yeah. And then... I think... Do you want me to back it up? Yeah, I think... Let's back it up. Back it up. Keep it simple. Um, so you can see um, the ball grid array is a nice, uh, large um, grid, so it's really easy to uh, pick in place and then uh, reflow and then wrap around your wires. And you can even kind of see that there's this little PCB and then it's epoxied yeah. on top. So all in one, you know, RAM, microcontroller, microprocessor, everything you need looks like this one has about half a gig of RAM. That's probably what the 512M stands for. All right, well, Blinka coming soon. Right? Okay, um. yeah, I could probably, <laughs> I, I'm sure you could run Python and Blinka on it. All right, so that's available on DigiKey, and that is... Hi on MPI.